I want to give you a couple of pieces here um, about the coronavirus that I, I'm going to probably repeat several times uh, on today's show. It is really important that you understand that this is the beginning of this. Understand, when I have been saying to you for a while, we are all going to get this. That is not to let your guard down. That is to tell you we are all going to get this. This is a long-term event. This is, we hope, we hope, uh, and somebody used to always say, Hope is a step away from despair. Yeah, uh, that one may be true in this particular case because it looks like this is not a seasonal flu. It looks like this is going to continue to go through the summer. We don't know for sure yet, but indications are that it's not seasonal. We also don't have any kind of natural immunity to this. Even after you get it, it still looks like you can reinfect so we could just be living with this for a long period of time. Things are going to change, and the time to change them is right now. I've been telling you for the last few days, I've been looking for the, um, the tripwires. How, do, how, do, how does our society decide when we're going to close school? Because we're all looking, in our life, we are all looking for someone else to trigger a tripwire. Somebody else says, you know what, I'm not going into work today. And it's somebody you trust. And they're like, well, why not? Because I think it's dangerous. That might be a personal tripwire. One of the tripwires that will cause real concern is when they cancel schools. Now, schools are starting to cancel. Here's why we're not canceling schools right now. And it is critical that you understand, especially if you're looking at to the school district as a tripwire. The most effective thing, and I was hoping the president would say this last night, everyone is out, generally speaking, on spring break. Right now, the schools should make the choice, the voluntary choice, you know what? Add another week. Just add another week. Don't come back next week. Have fun, kids, because in a week, we will know. I said this when this first happened we were in early January, and people started to call and write, and people on the staff said, are we going to cancel the cruise? Now, this is when it was just in China. And I said, just let it play out. We're going to know the answer. The answer will appear. There's no reason to panic about it. The decision will be made for us. Now, two weeks ago, was it two weeks ago or was it last week we, we canceled the cruise? Two weeks ago, I think. I don't even know. Was it last week? I think it was last week, okay. yeah. So just think of that. Last week, it was just becoming clear, but yet cruise lines, CDC, nobody said cancel cruises. But it was so clear that we were in meetings going, okay, we, we got to, we've got to cancel this. We just have to cancel it. It's irresponsible not to cancel it. So we couldn't wait any longer for the tripwire. We canceled on Friday or Thursday and uh, on Sunday, the CDC said no cruises. Right now, everyone knows, including Captain Steubing, cruises <laughs> shouldn't be done. That's three days after, four days after the CDC said don't do it. Not to mention, the, none of the countries we were going to visit were going to let us in anyway. Right. They're all, right. They would, I mean, Israel is a 14 day well, when quarantine. We were, Italy's right. completely closed down. But that's new, and that's new. Yeah. Those are both, those are, that's since Friday. Okay. Incredible. So things are moving rapidly because we're now hitting that exponential growth. Now, let me, let me give you some information here uh, that, I, that I got from Professor of Epidemiology and Director of the Center for Communicable Disease Dynamics at Harvard. His name is Dr. Lipswitch or Lipstitch. Um, he is, um, this is something that was prepared uh, for me. Uh, I asked a, a group to do some, just help me with tripwires. Help me understand when to pull the trigger on certain things and what to, to prepare for. So this team of mine went to um, the professor of epidemiology. I'm, I'm going to ask this group if they will allow me to release this. This, is, this was prepared uh, for me. And I'm fine with it, but I don't know if they want their 
name out there or whatever. So I'm asking them if they will let me repair, uh, re just release this entire report of about 20 pages. But it's really important. So um, in this report, he said there is a chance, chance, between 40 and 70 percent of the world's adult population could end up infected with coronavirus. Now, a week later, he said 20 to 60 percent of adults are going to become infected. In either event, those are huge numbers. He went on to say, at the moment, we're all in denial because it doesn't feel real because nothing is happening in our own communities right now. Here's what you must do. Cancel public gatherings. Potentially close schools, especially if there begin to be clusters. But I want to explain that here in just a few minutes. The clusters are, they're here already. We're already, it's everything that you're worried about is already here. Okay? You just don't know it yet. This is following exactly the way it happened in China. But let me give you some assumptions here. Assume there are 2,000 current cases in the U.S. as of March 6. That is eight times the number that has been confirmed through lab tests because of the shortage of test kits and the absence of symptoms in milder cases. All right? Now, these assumptions would mean if we have 2,000 cases currently that are happening in the United States, and I think it's a very safe bet to say that that is happening, that we just don't know about. That means um, that uh, the cases will double every six days. Now, that's going to go to every two days soon. But let me just give you every six days. If we have 2,000 current cases... That means that every six days, it's going to double. And if you use that pretty uh, safe assumption, that means that there will be one million cases in the U.S. by the end of April. Two million cases in the U.S. by the first week of May. Four million by mid-May. And so on and so on and so on. Now, here's what I've been trying to express to you, and, and maybe this will clear things up. When the president said last night, we have to work together, we have to work together, we have to put things aside, and we have to work together, we have to help each other, we have to do the right thing. The U.S. has 2.8 hospital beds for every 1,000 people. Okay, we are in really good shape with hospital beds compared to everybody else. We have the best uh, uh, health care system in the world. We have, we have uh, our intensive care units. We have more intensive care beds than anybody else for the population size. But we have 330 million people. That means we have a total of 1 million hospital beds. At any given time, 65% of those beds are already occupied. I know this because I thought my father-in-law was, was, his days were numbered, and he was at Yale New Haven, a very good hospital, but uh, Yale New Haven, uh, one that is overwhelmed. He didn't have a, a bed to go to. He was in the emergency room, and he was in the emergency room for over a day before they got him a bed. They had, and this is before any of the coronavirus. This is just a day to day. They were waiting for people to check out so he could get a bed in the hospital. The emergency room had people again before the coronavirus. You had, like your number was 11H. That means that you were the 11th person in the hallway. These were really sick people then. So 65% across the country of those beds are already occupied. That leaves only 330,000 beds available nationwide. Now, that's not necessarily intensive care. That's just a bed. 
Using the numbers established so far in Italy, about 10 per, 10% of the cases are serious enough to require hospitalization. So if we apply the assumptions by about May 8th, all open hospital beds in the U.S. will be filled. This, again, says nothing about if it's an appropriate hospital bed because it can quarantine you or it is an intensive care that says nothing about respiration units. I mean, there's not enough units in Italy to intubate everybody that needs to be intubated. Or um, or uh, what was it, the word that... Uh, uh, Barack Obama used when he was like, uh, you know, a breathalyzer. There's not enough breathalyzers there. Inhalator? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. So now the the number of severe cases could change either direction. But we're not going to have enough beds. The federal government also has a national stockpile of 12 million N95 masks and 30 million surgical masks, which are better than nothing, but that doesn't stop our medical workers from breathing things in. We have a stockpile of 12 million masks. Now let's do the math on this. If COVID-19 cases appear in many more states and counties, all healthcare workers are going to need to wear masks. If all healthcare workers that are currently on the job are issued one mask per day, we will be out of masks in two days. By the way, one mask a day per healthcare worker, not idea. But that's what had to be done uh, in China. Now, we can make more, but as, uh, as was discussed in Congress just yesterday, We've got all kinds of regulations that the masks that we make here uh, can't be used here. We can sell them overseas, but we can't use them here. All of that nonsense has got to stop right now. So now what do we, what do, we do first? 